a short video on the dangers of the Thames. Uh, first one about boat accidents. Luckily, there's very few boat accidents on the Thames. The Marchioness disaster was a very famous one where 51 people died when a aggregate carrier, the Bow Bell, went into the back of the pleasure boat, Marchioness, which had 131 passengers on board, and it sank straight away. She went over the top and she sank her. This was a massive wake-up call in the Thames and a lot of policies were changed and the main factors they said was lack of lookouts and navigation. So the party boat had lots of noise. The boat bell was empty so it's really hard to see uh, with the bow up in the water. So this was um, a wake-up call. Lots of change in the Thames and the Thames is much safer. The next video is from the RNLI talking about the dangers of swimming in the Thames being cut off from the foreshore with the tide coming in, the eddies and the rips and getting caught under pontoons. We've had quite a big increase in calls in the, in the last two months or so with the hot weather uh, and there's been an increase in the amount of people that are swimming in the Thames. Uh, we've also seen an increase in people being taken ill and in, or being injured on, on boats, whether they're passenger boats or, or private boats. And we've also seen quite a few people being cut off by the tide in places along the Liverpool Central London as well. Uh, very fast flowing, there's also a lot of undercurrents, eddies in the water as well. Uh, it's quite easy for people to get caught in an undertow. Um, and also with the water being cold, uh, it can affect the body and you know, sort of cold water shock. The river environment's a lovely place to be, it's a great place to spend time. It just looks so inviting. And especially with alcohol or, or other distractions, peer pressure, um, certain illnesses, it can drag people away from, from the safety of shore. And very quickly, the story will unfold and doesn't end well. One afternoon we was called, there was someone in the water inside the pier. The fact that we couldn't get any boats into him meant that somebody had to enter the water. And so I got into a dry suit and had to swim over to the guy and we managed to force him through a small gap between the wooden slat, it was a good outcome. There's a partnership in place between the Port of London Authority, the Metropolitan Police, the London Ambulance Service, the RNLI, Her Majesty's Coast Guard and the London Fire Brigade who are all looking to work together in partnership to try and address this issue of drowning in the Thames. Not everyone who enters the river is there by choice. We will do everything we can to help people. There's tides that will take you under within two minutes of your body not being able to deal with cold water shock and then the likelihood of you coming up it's not going to happen to be honest in short you don't want to go swimming in the thames otherwise you get caught in the uh, the tide this is crazy this chap jumps off tower bridge and into the thames as he comes over he passes out look at him in the water there and we can see as soon as he hits the water he's not moving his head down if he had taken a gasp of water with cold water shock, he would have sunk at this point. He was really lucky that he regained consciousness and he could swim. And he realised now how stupid the whole idea was. He's in cold water shock. He's scared. He's in high likelihood of drowning. But more importantly, he could go under with the, one of the pontoons. He could go under the one of the barges. He's been swept quite quickly down the Thames. And if he goes underneath the pontoon, he will stay there and he'll come out three days later when the bacteria in his body bloats him and he comes out. He's really lucky. He's picked up and he's rescued. So he's really lucky that he's coming out. Now he's shouting for help and he realises how stupid that his actions have been. And he's calling for help. He's panicking. He's been swept down the river. And... <clears throat> It's pulled out is in a pretty bad way but he does live and at the end of his video he says this is the most stupid thing I've done and do not do it so guys do not enter the Thames don't jump off any bridges don't do any dares keep safe if you go on the beach make sure that the tide is falling and the tide isn't rising and that you're not cut off and stay safe enjoy the Thames enjoy the waterways but stay safe keep out of the water 
As you fall in the water, the body goes into cold water shock. This is an involuntary reaction. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't hold your breath underwater for any more than 9-10 seconds. Your body goes into panic. You take a gasp of air, hopefully that you can take air and you're not taking in water. Because only a small amount in your lungs will make you drown. Um, here's a short clip with Professor Mike Tipton say, explaining about cold water shock and the dangers of cold water shock. One of the biggest dangers of going overboard is the immediate effects to the body of hitting the water. It's called cold water shock and it's by far the biggest cause of death in marine accidents. It doesn't matter how strong, fit, thin, fat, old or young you are, it could well happen to you. Well, the cold water very quickly makes the skin temperature drop and you get some dramatic responses. Your heart rate shoots up, blood pressure shoots up, but most important of all, you lose control of your breathing. You start to hyperventilate or overbreathe, and you can't hold your breath anymore. So normally you can hold your breath for about a minute in air. That drops down to just a few seconds when you hit cold water. So the dangers of drowning are increasing by the minute? Absolutely, because you've only got to take about two to three pints of water in the lung. That's about a third of a normal breath in, and you've passed the lethal volume for drowning. So that's immediate. What happens, what happens next? Well, if you survive that phase, and sadly many don't, you then go on to the next phase, short-term phase, where your nerves and muscles, particularly in the arms and legs, start to cool, and you lose the ability to do things like swim, to help yourself, to you know, open a flare, to do all those kinds of emergency actions that you need to do to ensure your survival. Using the RLI HQ survival pool and the unsuspected member of the public. One, two, three. When you fall into cold water, you panic. It's called cold water shock. It increases your heart rate, making you gasp uncontrollably and flash around, increasing the chance of you swallowing water into your lungs and drowning. What I did was float, find my instinct to panic or swim hard, leaning back in the water, keeping my airway clear, opening my body up and extending my arms and my legs. You can stay calm for 60 to 90 seconds and get your breath back. It allows you to think straight and plan your next move. To improve your chance of survival, In short, keep out the water. If you do accidentally fall in the water, float. Don't panic. Lay back, arms out, and relax for 60 to 90 seconds until you can make a plan. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video.